All right, we're gonna be checking out the 2021 Pleasure Way Plateau TS. This is on the Mercedes chassis. This is the newer chassis. So you have the nice eyebrows and everything going on with this one. This is a diesel unit. So we'll have to add the DEF fluid in this. Now, at the driver's door, we have our diesel fuel. This is a red cap and it says diesel on both sides. So there's never put gas in this. It only takes diesel. Um, to open this, you must open up the driver's door to get to that. Now the hood prop to open up the hood is in this driver's door on the left hand side by your feet. That's right here. Just pull that down. That releases the hood latch. Now we'll check up front here. Now the latch is on the right hand side of this crown. Sorry, left hand side of the crown. And then you have your hood prop on the left hand side. Now we'll hold our hood up. Now we have our DEF fluid additive right here. The DEF fluid normally comes in a gallon and it has its own hose that you can attach to that and then fill it up. Now on the inside dash, <coughs> we do have a level sensor so you can tell how much you do have in there. Now it's about uh, from a couple of the guys here at work have some diesel trucks and they use uh, a gallon every like 3,000 miles. So just keep a, uh, a gallon with you at all times and you never have to worry about long hauls or long trips. Uh, it is already topped off so you don't have to worry about filling it for a while. We have our coolant here. We have our oil here. Now our oil also doesn't have a dipstick anymore. That's all electric, electronically leveled and that gives you all that information on inside there. We have our air box here and our uh, window washer fluids to the right of that. Now to jump this in the case that this has, you left the lights on or somehow you left the lights on, we're gonna rotate this to the right and push back. This is our positive pole. Our negative pole is right here. And then you just put your jumpers on that and then you can try to start the coach. Uh, this coach does have a spot for a second battery, which we are looking to do in the future. Um, this unit also uh, has a break-in period for the motor, but that's all Mercedes chassis related, so just don't overload it. Just drive it normally and you'll be fine. And there we are. Now we do have the option for the front license plate as well on this. So you already have the bolts there. So you can put on the front bumper uh, plate reader if you're out of state. We have our front fog lights, high beams, low beams are in the right and left side. Um, we have a nice grill. Uh, this here, I'd recommend just touching it up sometimes, meaning like wiping it off to make sure that you get all the bugs off because the bug guts can start to decay this plastic over time. Now I've seen that myself on older models as I'm a RV technician here at Fretz RV. Now behind the driver's door, we have our outside shower compartment, our utility center, our Truma water heater, our furnace, and our refrigerator. And all the way in the back is our battery vents. So we're gonna start here with the shower. The shower is on, has a 751 key. Uh, and by the way, you have your key fob for the vehicle. So you have lock, unlock, and this, if you hold it, has an electric door, so it'll close the door on the other side. Now the 751 key is indicated by the numbers on the key. And we have our outside shower with our hot and cold side. So the hot water all comes from the water heater here and our cold side <coughs> in here. Now you can dry camp with this unit. This unit does have a fresh water tank in it and a water pump. So when you're not hooked up to city, you can go ahead and turn on the water pump. That'll pull water from the fresh tank into the systems. Now that goes all to the cold side and goes to the uh, water heater as well. So you can have a nice hot shower while you're off the road. Next to that, we have our utility center. This here does not have a lock as to it having the propane gas 
uh, shutoff valve. So this will shut off all gas to the unit in case of a fire or anything like that. So to use propane in the system, <coughs> we just need to have this to the on position. We have our cable input right here. So we have cable from the uh, campground. We can go ahead and plug it in there. And this is our garden hose connection for our city faucets and fixtures and stuff. So our, this will be where all of the water comes into our unit from uh, the spigot. We have our 30 amp short cord connection here. Um, let me find that for you real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so this is our short cord here. This was in the rear of the unit. We have a three prong here. This three prong is gonna go into the outlet, but first I'm gonna attach the short cord to itself. So we have this part here that has its own little L. This L is gonna coincide with the plug end here. So we're gonna match those plug ends up. Firmly place in, place in and turn it to the right. And then you have a locking collar so that the kids don't trip over it and unplug you while you're running the air conditioner. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this end here and plug it into a 30 amp power supply. Now this has a blue light indicating that we have good power here at the short cord, at our short supply. And we also have a red light at the other end. So if either of these lights don't illuminate, it means that there's either cotton your wire or the LEDs have burned out. Now, uh, another way to check for 120 is make sure that your microwave is on. And this will mean that you have good shore power connection to the unit. Now onto the Trumo water heater here. We have our open and close. Lift this up and place it down. Now we have our off and on here. This is where all the flame pump, not flames come out, but all the heat from the you know, working. This here is what I call our duct bill. Underneath our duct bill here, you'll see these two little black knobs. When you see these two black knobs on here, that means that the Truma water filter is in the unit. Uh, so now you can run water through this and it won't come pouring out. Um, I don't want to open this up right now because I'm not sure if it has water pressure in the system at the moment. Um, but all your water, this is your drain for your water heater right here. And this, this is your overflow. And the only thing you got to remember is the power switch part right here. So up or down, doesn't matter. As long as it's on, it will operate. Now this is our um, furnace part of the, so we have our uh, intake and our exhaust here. This is the compartment for the back of the refrigerator. Now this refrigerator is a three stage refrigerator. So you have 120 here, you have your propane here, which you can Open this up and kind of look into it to see if it has lit on flame. <coughs> and then we have 12 volt into the unit. And these here is just press on and turn left. The only reason you need to get in there is just to see if it has power or something, if you're using some diag tools, or you can just bring it back to us and we can take care of all that for you if you were ever to run into a problem. Now, at the driver's door entry, down at the bottom, we also have our dump station. So this is where all of the gray water from our kitchen sinks, our showers and everything go to, and also our toilet wastewater goes to. So this is our dump valves. So we have a nice little holder here. So we have a black handle and a gray handle. So black is for our toilet, gray is for all of the other drains. Now on the right hand side here, there's a little cam lock. I'm gonna rotate to the left, pull out. This here allows me to get access to our waste hose. So now this has your end here and you have a second end here. That end, I'm just pushing on it there because I know this unit isn't used. So we have a drain in the center of the floor here. Um, so you take that end, put it in the dump station. You'll find that at a waste management facility at your local boroughs or county, or you'll find them at the campground entrances whereabouts, or they'll have it in a different location. You can definitely ask wherever you're staying, where their dump station is, and they can show you or tell you where it's at. So that end would just go in the hole. 
This end here, you remove this cap. Take this end here. Lock it in place. We're gonna pull in the black, allow any black water come, come out. Once that's done draining, we're gonna close this. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull the gray. That will allow any gray water that has come from our sinks or kitchen sink or bathroom sink and shower into the gray. After that's done dumping, we're gonna close that. Remove this. Put this cap back on. And then lift up the end here to allow any excess to come out into the system. Then take this out of the hole. And then you can go ahead and push all this back in its storage compartment here. And I'd recommend using gloves after your initial use. So put that on the to buy list if you have. Now we're gonna go ahead and close this. Now we're gonna go to the rear of the unit. Now on this unit here, we have what I call dualies. You have an inner and an outer wheel on the back here. So when you get a flat, you gotta call roadside assistance <coughs> for them to help you as those wheels are really torqued on there. Uh, these have the aluminum bright Acolo rims. So you'd need um, a special type of uh, valve fitting to fill these as you have your valve stem this way and then you have a valve stem the regular way. So this one here is inverted and this one here is the regular standard st style and they both have caps on them. Uh, at the rear of the tire here we do have our generators exhaust so if you have any family camping next to you or you're parked pretty close to one try not to run your generator as you're going to be sending all that CO2 emissions their way possibly them in their sleep, so don't do that. And then we have our vent here for our battery system. Now on the back here we have our uh, rear backup camera, our hitch and sipping way. All right, now all the way at your back here, the lower corner of the back driver's side, you have a uh, a gas valve here, this is a quick connect. You can get the quick connect so if you want to get an outside stove or whatnot, you can use that out here and then pull this, put it in, pull this lever in line with the hose and that will allow flow of gas as long as you have a disconnect, quick connect into that. Next to the quick connect, you have your uh, fill station. So underneath this uh, yellow cover, uh, they'll fill it up in here. This is the bleed valve, so make sure that's all the way closed. Now, to fill this, you need to go to a certified LP filling station. You can find that at any local uh, provider that sells gas, meaning like at home heating and oil, and also here at Fred's RV and some campgrounds even fill up your uh, propane. All the way in the back here, underneath your seats, we have our lithium batteries. This cover is just magnetized on it. Underneath, you have your two lithium batteries. Above that, we'll have our solar charger disconnect line. So if you're gonna park this inside, you wanna disconnect this if you have the whole system off so it doesn't discharge the batteries over a long period of time. Now that's like if you have a carport over top so that the solar isn't getting to it, as the solar controller can be a parasite draw on the system as long as the sun's not being down on it. Now that being the case, if it's the winter, I'd also have that off just because once you have snow coverage on the top, effectively knocking out the solar panel, it'll eventually become a, um, a draw on the battery. So when you come back next year, it's not gonna be uh, charged. So make sure you turn that off if it's winter time, you're not gonna be using the unit for a long period periods of time. Also on the left hand side, we have our transfer box. So you don't want to keep a lot of things around that. 
Now, what that transfer box does is it goes from short power to the system when you're plugged into short power, but when you unplug from short power and turn on your generator, it will switch automatically to the generator power. So it will have a slight delay before it engages to that. In this case here, it has a tire filler and a fix a flat. So if you get a nail on the tire and have a flat tire, you can slowly fill up your tire with this and put the fix a flat in it and that will fill the leak from the nail, if you get a nail on the tire. So when you're putting things in here and you want to put these wet back through the system, don't put it over. Make sure the seat belts go under, then you can push them through. Other thing being is when you're filling up this area, you want to try to stay, stay clear of the, level of the mechanisms here for the bed. So the higher you go, you just want to make sure you're not in this area. So if you have like a rug with the little tassels on it, it could become entrapped in here and then that will foul up the system. So just make sure you don't keep a lot of things by these gears. Uh, in the back here, we also have the rear uh, screen. So to do the rear screen, I'm going to lift up on this. You have these two latches. Put that one down. Moving that all the way down. Now you can have the doors open and allow the breeze to come through. Now, if you still want to get things from the back here, you still have a little pass through. And these have its own little roll ups. So, if you wanted to, you could have this roll up all the way. Like so. And then you have the same style latch on the opposite side to click into that. So, we'll, we'll keep it locked up in place. And vice versa for the bottom section here as well. You can bring these zippers up. It has velcro on the bottom, keep that nice and solid down there. And you have the loops down here as well. So it's all to your preference as you'd like to roll it up as many parts as you'd, as you'd like at once. Now we'll go on the passenger side then. Always remember to close this door first, then close this door. And then everything will sit nice and flush. If not, you could mark up the Mercedes emblem. Now on the rear here, we have our exhaust system. So this is where our exhaust comes out for the coach. We have 120 outlets on the rear here. These are going to be powered either when you're plugged in or have the generator running. We have our nice mud flaps in the back, a nice uh, step here to the entrance. We have our potable water for our fresh tank here. That key is a 751 here. Now under here, you just go ahead you can fill this up with the garden hose from home with your house water, or you can sit here with uh, purified water with the gallon jugs. And it'll take a little bit more time, but it's still doable. And then you have this little hash marks here. That's just a vent for it. So you want to make sure you don't have a lot of dirt in there so that your fresh tank can breathe and not collect as much mildew and everything like that. Now, if you needed to, I would say each season, try to sanitize and flush your fresh tank if you're going to be using it a lot. Uh, you can get that product in the store here or online. Uh, the reason you want to do that is because if you have water sitting in a container for a long period of time, you can have algae build up in that and that can foul up the water pump and then come a costly repair. So you, all you have to do is really just follow those instructions that come from those kits and you can fill it through here and you'll be fine. Now with this here, you can either A, just go ahead and pull on the handle here to open it, 
or on your third button here, just hold that and your door will open itself. Uh, you can play tricks on the kids or the family. Have this in your pocket and say open door, hold that button and wow them. Now at the entry door here, we also have the same style of screen. Always roll this inward because of the sliding door. So we have a zipper over here. Now this one's a little hard to get to, so it's easier to probably get from the inside. Bring it down to there. Bring it all the way down. Now we have the same zipper on this side. Bring that all the way down. Now this does have uh, a magnet here. So when you're inside, you can make it look a little bit better. But all you have to do is open it up in and out. Get that little close there. And you have a nice plug screen here. Now I'm gonna close this back up. Go to the rest of it. Now this part here is probably easiest to do from the inside. So this has a little foam core at the bottom. Roll that back up. Now, we have a full length awning, which is our Eagle. This one's a 35. It's a 65. And this one will be controlled from our main control panel here, which is at our entry door. So we are going to push the gears here. That will give us our bed, our awning and our fan control, which is in the center by the bathroom and over top of our uh, galley area. So if this light here, if ignition uh, disabled, means that when you have the key on or the coach running, it will not allow operation of the awning so it doesn't move out in transit on you. So you gotta make sure you have your coach completely off. And then you wanna hold extend for it to go out. Now, you do have a full length awning light as well. Now that light is controlled under the lighting page on this. This unit also is equipped, I believe. Yes. It's equipped with a wind sensor. So if we have wind while we're away, if you have the coach on and the disconnect on, and you have a gust of wind come through, it will automatically retract, allowing thousands of savings for you in your pocket. And it will automatically retract all the way and close. So this is our main control panel. So let me go back to home. So you have your home screen here. This is our battery disconnect. Once that closes all the way, I'll show you what that does. So now the awning's closed all the way. So if you turn off the battery disconnect, that kills all 120, sorry, 12 volt into this unit as long as you're unplugged. To turn on the disconnect, that also turns on our propane as well. So if you have this off, it's gonna kill propane, it's gonna kill all your 12 volt and can kill your inverter, meaning all power to that, doesn't harm it. <clears throat> so we have everything here. We have our thermostat, so this is has our modes, and underneath modes, that's gonna be our AC, so you can set your temperatures down by scrolling down. Wherever this black little dot is, that's gonna be where it's at. So this one's pretty noisy exterior AC. We have our 
Truma Vario heat. For that to operate, you need to have propane in your system. You need to have your propane switch on. That there is going to operate off of the Truma system. That's all going to be the little round vents that are in this unit. I'll show you that in a few moments. And then we have our vent. The reason the vent's attached to the temperature control here is you can set it for hot or cold. So during the summer, you want to set the temperature to cold. So once it gets cold outside, it will actually close the vent and stop the fan from working. When you have it hot during the uh, summer, it will actually open up, allowing flow to come out, bringing in fresh air into the coach, allowing the coach to cool down. So if we have it to auto, I'll set the fan to auto. Now what it's talking about auto there is you have fan low for the AC, fan high for the AC, and auto. So what auto does is it adjusts high or low depending on the temperature of the coach. Now where that is going to be picked up from is the little black sensor up there. Let me turn on the lights so we can see. So right up by the entry there, you have those two dots. The oval shaped one is going to be the temperature sensor for your gauge here. The round one is going to be the temperature sensor for the furnace system, which is on the Truma system. Under here we have quick light controls. So we have our porch light, which is the little small porch light on the outside there. We have our entry light, which is right here. We have our awning light right here. Another cool thing about the awning light, spin that a little bit. is on the lighting page, <clears throat> we have all these little sliders. So we can go ahead and even dim the outside lights on the awning. We can dim those or even brighten that if you need to. We have the same thing for our kitchen area, our countertop, our reading by the rear uh, seating, our sofa valance, which is, which is gonna be uh, the lights over the seating arrangement over there and our full living room as in the rear there. And then we have our entry light. So we can actually dim all of the lights in this coach, which is a pretty nice accessory that has been on this unit, which is kind of new to these models. And also we have our master on and off. Now this unit has two screens, one by the rear uh, dinette bedroom living area. So all you'd have to do is push off. That kills all the lights, except for the awning lights. The reason being so is when, if you have guests or something outside, or you want to leave the awning light on as a little uh, night, light. night light or security light, you can leave that. You can dim it or turn it up if you want the bugs to be flying around it at night during the summer. Um, and then all you have to do is push it on and it saves all the original dimmed settings. So if you dim all these down at night and you need to just get up to do something and or you drop something off the bed, all you'd have to do is hit on and you don't have to worry about having that bright light flashing in the eye, kind of messing up your eyes and have to wait longer. So I'm going to turn all these back up so we can see a little bit more in high def here. Next thing underneath the light there, sorry, let's, let's continue with home. Uh, so that's our lighting page and our lights. So at home, we can see our DC power. So this is going to be our voltage and our state of charge and the temperature of the battery. So right now we're at 100% state of charge, charging at 13.5 volts, and the battery's temperatures are 70 uh, degrees. So that's the de temperature of the batteries. Now with these batteries, if they get too hot, they are go into uh, overheat lockout mode. So we'll stop uh, discharging of the battery or charging the battery. <coughs> now if that happens that they get too hot, just turn on your coach and turn on your AC and kind of let it cool down the coach. Now if you're taking a trip out to Arizona, it could take a long period of time. I'll suggest going into a shaded area, which will help cool down the vehicle. Now the opposite being for winter, if the batteries also won't charge if they're too cold as well. So you can have uh, oscillation of your lights going on when you turn on your battery disconnect. You can see oscillation going on and all you'd have to do is turn on your motors, your coach again, turn on your heater, your dash heat, let the vehicle try to warm up a little bit more. Once it's allowed 
um, you see the temperature kind of go up a while, you'll be able to turn on the furnace as well with your propane and that will allow charging to start again. Now we have our generator controls here. This is gonna be the generator that's underneath. This is the Onan generator. We also have our source here. So right now we're plugged in the shore cord. So you can see that we're getting shore power as well. So that's another indicator that we're getting good power into the unit. Underneath there, we have our water pump. This is our switch for our water pump to take water from our fresh tank to our kitchen and accessories. And this is our water heater for the Truma system. So all we do is turn it on here. So this brings us a new screen here. So we have our Eco and Comfort. Eco is only gonna heat the water heater when it sees demand, meaning that we have to have our a source on, meaning like if we have our kitchen sink or a shower on, then it will fire and take a little couple moments for hot water to come from the water heater to the uh, spigots. Now me, I'm impatient, I hate waiting. So I'll put it on comfort. Now that's gonna use a little bit more propane, so if I'm trying to extend my propane life, I would leave it on comfort, but me, I take Go ahead. All right, so the comfort does hot water immediately, so you don't have to wait for the hot water to show up at your faucets. Now I turn that on. Now you can also set the temperature of your hot water. Me, if it's not boiling, I don't like it. So you can set the temperature to 120 degrees or more. Well, not more. 120 is your limit because 140 is scalding. So that will give plenty of hot, of hot water for everything and every use that you can think of. Or you can turn it down to like a lukewarm of 100 degrees and you can have decent warm water. And then you hit OK and that keeps it at its setting once you set it. You click OK. And then it's set. Now you're going to hear a little whizzing and gurgling. That's going to be the Truma water heater working. And now it's blue, indicating that the switch is on. I'll turn it off just because uh, I don't have water pressure in the system at the moment. So I'm just going to hit cancel. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prime all the water systems to do so. I'm gonna push the water pump there. All right, here, pause up. All right, so this is your water pump switch right here. We just go ahead and push that on. Now it's blue, indicating that it's on. I'm gonna go ahead, just the comfort, click OK. And it's gonna go through its thing. Now it's on. It's doing this little whirl thing. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a valve. Now it's pulsating because that's the style of water pump this system uses. Now, when it's on hot, it's gonna be a little bit more consistent since the water heater has its own little tank as well. There we go. And once you turn off the water source, the pump will stop operating, but it could, depending on this unit that you're using, it's going to have a uh, kind of go slowly, like click, 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 click until it's done. Now that's normal. Uh, while we're here, this is the kitchen sink cover. You have little vents here. Hot and cold for the water here. Now you do have a little part you can pull out and a sprayer. So if you really need to wash something down, you can. Other reason they leave this open is because since water finds its own level, right now the level is right here. So you can have anywhere from this whole section here drip out slowly if you're going down the road. Now that's normal, just like so. Now if we go continue looking at the stuff here, as you can see right here, we have our level sensors. So the LP is yellow and all the way full. Fresh tank blue. Gray tank's probably gonna be gray and black tank's probably gonna be black when it's filling up. And we can see the percentage of fullness here. So I'm gonna unplug us from shore power and you're gonna see what happens at that spot right here then.
Oh. All right, now that we're unplugged, you can see that we have no AC source. To start the generator, all we're gonna do is hold this here. Sometimes it could take a couple times to prime. So right here, I'm priming it by holding the stop, counting to four Mississippi, let off, give it a second, then I'm hold start. Once it started running, I'm gonna let, let it go. You can see how many amperages are being put into your system here. So right now we have a load of negative five amps, um, nine amps, so it's pulling nine amps of DC power off of it. The generator now is uh, running. In a few moments, you're gonna see that it is going to uh, click over and start charging, and you're gonna see how many amps you're gonna be putting into the system. You can also see that the gen, it says gen here for your AC source. That's indicating that the generator is starting to power the unit. Uh, you can also do that all at this electric spot here. So you can see all your amps here. And now we have, uh, of input into our 12 volt system. And it says charge because the battery is all the way charged. So we have our three sources of AC power. We have our generator, our inverter, and our shore power. Our shore power is gonna be the plug on the outside. Our inverter is the box that's underneath that takes 12 volt and the 120. And our generator that takes propane, motor, inertia into 120 volts. This here is our generator as well, so it has a little bit more information for us. We have 0.6 of an hour on the generator. I'm going to turn it off so you can hear me a little bit better, but you could see what your AC power is was there. You could see your volts, amps, and frequency that it's running. You have your microwave and cooktop management, meaning that they're green, so they're good to go. Um, our battery is all the way charged. Now we can see we have a day and zero hours if we just leave it how it is, estimated time. So I'd say it's about uh, about 20 hours. If you did nothing else and just left this out how it is, then you have an average. So after you use this more often, you can see that it's gonna have more of an average consumption use because it's gonna take some of your habits and habits and like loads that you normally use when camping. But instant is just how much you how long it lasts for everything that it is at the moment. We have our solar panel charger here, so we can see our panel volts at seven volts right now. We are inside of a shop right now, so we're not gonna get any real voltage off the solar controller. We have our charge volts is 13.5, and our charge amps is zero amps because we have no sun. Now, you're gonna expect to see a maximum of, I think, uh, 15 to 20 amps out of the charge the charge panel here uh, It could vary now. I'm going off of a maybe five six year old data that I'm used to Trying to figure out math for solars um, You have your off on so you can turn your solar charger completely off Or turn it on no charging you have your settings here so you can see the temperatures the panels voltages the historic amps for today yesterday day before, past week, total, and over the total days. So you can see that yesterday we got two amp hours out of the solar. Uh, day before we got eight amps. And past week we got 12 amps out of it. Now, I would say then that 12 amp hours is the most amp hours you get out of the solar panel that is on this. Now, if you wanted to clear the history on this, you can go ahead and push this button here. That clears all this history here. Now you don't need to worry about the battery type, the battery bank size, uh, the thermistor charger, any of this stuff here, but you can see what your max rate of charge volt is, 24 volts, which is fine. Uh, charge currents, 30 amps, panel, and you have 12,000, 1200 watts uh, max rated over power. So the max rated panel voltage is 100 volts. So everything there is fine. So you don't need to worry about changing anything or worrying about anything here. The next one down, if I go back, to go back, all you have to do is hit the little tab here to go to the home screen. Yeah, that one doesn't do anything. Uh, we have our inverter here. So to get to the inverter then, 
we go to home I just have to switch one for it. All right, our inverter switch is actually in the overhead compartment right here. All of these compartments have these push file locks. When they're flushed, they're locked. To unlock, you let it go out so you can grab it. This here is our Xantrex Freedom X control panel. To turn it on, you have this little button here. Right now it's gonna tell us our battery voltage and load on it. So now we're unplugged, we're not running the generator, but this does run our cooktop and a refrigerator and the microwave behind me. This operates uh, multiple uh, outlets. They're normally labeled, but I'll honestly just say, plug your phone in, see if it starts charging, it bings. If not, it's probably not gonna be that outlet. Uh, right now we're at 13.3 here. Now that that's on, we can see all the power stuff again back at that control panel. So we can see that the inverter is now on here. So now we've got 20 hours and 50 minutes estimated time. We can see that our microwave and cooktop are engaged. So right now we're making 121 volts at zero amps because we're not having a draw. And we're at about 60 Hertz, which is proper. What else do we have at home? All right. so. Home's complete, now we have our gears again. The gear's gonna extend and retract so we can extend the rear couch there to make it into a bed like so, all the way down. Or we can bring it all the way back up. And then we have our fan, which is right here. Push the fan on. That's gonna open up the fan there, above us. Now we can change the fan speed bring that fan down. So it's just gonna sit there and allow regular flow through the unit. And then our last little piece here with the ups and down switch things, we can change it for height and Celsius. This here is gonna be the brightness of our screen. You can see our coach model here is a 2021 plateau. Here is where we can adjust our time for daylight savings. You can also set it to 24 hours. We have our screen settings here, which tell you all our power settings, default page and everything like that. You have light or dark screen settings. Now me, I like the dark scheme. It's up to you which scheme you'd like. You can also change your default buttons, which are the three buttons on the main screen there. So you can change all those here. And then if we push that again, that brings us back here. Then we have diagnostics. What diagnostic does is so you can see things that are off and on throughout our 12 volt system here. So right now, our, also you can see the air conditioner. So the air conditioner status is good. It's good to go. G12, that's the system that's operating everything off of everything we're touching here. Now this here is just a little pad that goes for the system. Uh, we have our main LCD here, our entry LCD here, our vent fan, which is above us, our AC, power monitor, our DM3 right here, our solar controller, our Truma for the heat and AquaGo, and the RVC bridge here for the rest of the stuff to make everything talk to each other. You can also see the 12, 12G system here, so you can see what's on and off. You can see the DMC, so you can see all the amperages, marks, max, DC voltage, current, battery temperature, and then you can also see whatever faults, if there was a problem with the unit, right here at the fault screen. So you can call us and tell us what's going on, and then we can call Pleasure Way and just be like, hey, where's this wire go? So we can try to help you out over the phone. Nine out of 10 times, I'd say you'd have to come here because if you can't fix it yourself, we can fix it. It's just that we gotta get some authorization going on to make sure they're gonna allow us to fix it. Also in the right hand corner of the home screen here, you can also see what the temperature is of your Truma Aqua Go. It's 111 degrees right now. Um, yep, that's fine. So we got the temperature and then to turn it off, just set off and okay. And then that light will go out indicating that's all the way off. So right now, I've been talking for a few moments at that 99%.
<clears throat> now we have outlets underneath our sink here so we can put our coffee maker, our phone charge, whatnot. We also have enough, a lot of space in our pantry. And that goes all the way down. And then you'll see this clear hose and your water pump is the pump right here. This is your water pump for your whole system. So it, to winterize, it's not really all that hard and it's nice and accessible. And then you have these large drawers. For all your pots and pans. And this is our induction cook pot. Yeah, induction cook top. Um, remove this sticker before using it. I left, we left this on here so you can save this information for down the road. Uh, if you take a magnet to any place you'd buy your uh, cooktops and everything like that, or even at home, take a magnet to it. If it sticks to it, you can use that pot or pan on this system here. Now keep in mind that right now, yes, I can turn this on and it's not gonna burn me. Now that's also just because I'm not magnetic, even though we have our own magnetic field. So after you get done cooking, don't touch the glass and don't put anything cold on top of this glass as you can shatter. All the blinds here are pulled down style blinds and have magnets to hold them in place. Um, you know, let's do this area. So we got our Norcold refrigerator. So the top one is gonna be our ice box. The bottom one's gonna be your refrigerator. It also comes with two ice trays, which is awesome. Now to operate this here, we have our on off button right here. So all I did is touch it. So right here, that means that we're on gas and it's at its coldest setting. The change that setting here to make it a little warmer or colder, go ahead and push this here. And then we have our mode. So right now that's battery and that's auto. So this here we use propane or 120, depending on the source that we have, 120. So you can force, force it into whatever system that you'd like. I recommend leaving it on auto, so just leave a propane gas on. You can have this run on propane. It has its own windshield and everything, so you don't have to worry about going down the road and it putting itself out. Also, it has its own direct spark ignition system in, in it, allowing it to stay lit and reignite or shut off the gas valve completely if it has failed to reignite. Now above us here, we have our convection microwave. So it's a regular microwave, but it's also a convection grill. Now in the cabinet over here, I have our high and low grill part. Now, everyone knows you gotta read the cooking appliances manuals to use them properly. But the only thing you gotta remember, the hardest thing to do is know how to use this. So I'd read up on that, but it does have express cook, which is nice. So one through six minutes is an express cook. A lot of my stuff just uses a minute to cook. I don't just quick cook hot dogs. Now, back here I have our, uh, this has all of our reading material and extra parts. This is the elbows for that hose. In here we also have an awning wand, which is retractable or compactable. Uh, this is in the instance that if the awning was to stop working, you can use that to reel it in. We have all of our Xantrex and solar controllers here. We have our TV equipment reading here. We have our toilet care here. This here has our Truma book and all of the other, the heating element, our a color wheels and all the other products like a wine guard components and a refrigerator manuals and our stovetop manuals. So read everything in here front to back. I can't stress that. That helps you out so you don't have to call in being confused about your unit. Because uh, be sure if you're a little confused, I can get a little confused just over the phone if I'm not personally looking at it. I'm going to put all these in there too as well. There we are. 
Now there is a quick guide here. This is your owner's manual. I'd read this one front to back as well. I'm just gonna put that on top. And then this one here is the Mercedes chassis manuals as well. So you can become a little bit more familiarized with the dashboard a little bit better. Now I'm gonna be giving you another video. I've gone over the same dash. They haven't changed the dash. So if the seats and dashboard don't look exactly the same, it's the same product and the same way to use everything as well. It's the same model. I just did this one maybe six months ago, uh, but it's all gonna be the same. So if the seats don't match up and whatnot, it's that, that would be the reason we spliced that in for you. Now, we also have our LG TV, our LG DVD player, and our Boss Surround Sound Bar in this here, the three, for those three. Now, in this bag here, this is gonna be our front seat, uh, air, not airbag, air mattress. bed, air mattress. It's custom made for these Mercedes chassis. Um, you do have your own 12 volt blow up piece for it. So you just plug that in the dash and blow it up. Now, I'm not gonna take this out of here, but as you can see, this is your, your blue bed. Uh, uh, I want to have you guys have the fun of trying to roll this back up to get it back in place. That's why I hate tent camping because I hate rolling everything back up in its place. And you do have a nice little holder bag, which is very nice for this. So when you get it, all you have to do is pull on that. This does have a little handle, which is nice. Now, <clears throat> all these components here are going to be in this rear compartment. I believe I did one on this as well, but we might splice it in. It might be a little bit different color again, but this is our front window shades. So when you want to have your privacy, when you're camping on the campground, this is the bag that all that's going to be. And that's also going to be back here. And it's nice that you got this year's models because they've upgraded their door hinge shock assembly, which is really, really nice. The last ones were a little bulky and they didn't hold as well. Now on the left hand side of me, we do have our TV. So I'm gonna allow my TV lady to sit over here. So this is our main TV here. Oh well, no, this one doesn't have the secondary TV on it. But to move this out of place, we have this little strap. So you pull on that strap and then you can rotate it. So if you're sitting on that side or on the bed, you can do so. You can also take it out a little bit more farther, like so, to have a little bit more company um, to use the TV. We'll just go ahead and push it on. Now this TV is, Higher than 20 volts, so you must have your inverter on, your unit plugged in, or your generator running off of propane. So, as you can see, that that's operational. Now, the volume's on that for that, but you can use this here. This is your boss surround sound. So, this has a couple different modes, so you can use your TV. That old Bible was used by my go. father. He gave it to me when I was a boy. So you can turn the volume up and down. Now you Old can set these as well up with the TV um, and your DVD player. Now you do have a DVD player. That DVD player is up here. To go to DVD, you're gonna have this little thing that looks like a co coax cable here. You push that, that gives us our inputs. We use our up and downs to pick. So we pick our HEM1. A lot of times this pit goes up, so what we're going to do is hit enter, which is English. Uh, if you have Wi-Fi at the house, uh, you scroll down, hit agree, 
Hit enter. You can pair it with your Wi-Fi at home. Or if you want to skip all that, you can go up to X, push X to go to use it as a regular DVD player. Now you can use USB and whatnot and fire sticks on this as well. So you have your movie, your photo, music, you have your premium from LG. So you can go on LG's website and kind of read up a little bit more on that. And then you have your settings for your network. Uh, this is a Blu-ray player, but it also can play regular DVDs as well. And that's right up there. Now to get back to TV, we're gonna go ahead and hit that little button there. Go up to TV, and push OK. That brings us back to the TV. <coughs> now when you're trying to search for channels, we're gonna hit the little house. The house is gonna bring us up to this screen here. We're gonna go over to settings, press OK. Once you're in this setting here, we're gonna push down the channels, go to auto tuning and press auto tuning. Once that's done, you're gonna hit start. But before we do that, up in this compartment here, there's a little wine guard box that's black. I'm just gonna go ahead, make sure that's on. To use cable, you're gonna turn this off. That stops uh, the booster from working and allowing cable into the TV. So when you turn it on, you're gonna press search. It's gonna search for the best TV signal in the area that you're at. Once that's done going around with the little red circle, you're gonna go over to the TV when you're in the screen and hit start. Once you hit start, it's gonna search for all the direct TV, TV, cable TV, and regular cable TV throughout the whole system. Now, also in this compartment here, you do have two resettable breakers. Uh, they're 120 breakers, one's for the induction cooktop and the other's for the microwave in this box here. And then, yeah, you have a lot of storage compartments. You have two, three, four, four regular storage compartments. The one up front houses that inverter and this one here is your entertainment center compartment. Now these here, I like to set these up here just so they're out of the way. That's a little small space and it holds everything all nice and neat. And then you can close that. Now to take the TV and put it back in place, all we're going to do is take this all the way this way. You can see this section here. Push out like so. Oops, I did it backwards. Don't worry if you do it backwards. Mm -hmm. Fix it. Pushing it the opposite way. There we are. Now that's set back in place. Now I'm gonna let that go so at least you have some channels before you take it. Now we have our table. So we have our table here. These tables have these little handles. This one here is a little loose. So to set the table height, we set the table height, push this little down, bring this handle down and then you can tighten it back up, like so. And then you have your set table height. You have your leg extension here, and then you have another one here. So that one there allows you to rotate it around. So if you're working on the computer, you can do so. Now you can remove these here. here and this is the lagoon style and then this has this rail here tighten that down on that has that nice and neat. And this one here can kind of hang out like so. It's 
make that all one piece. Now, under where I am sitting, we can move these cushions. Move this. Now, if you're reading the manual, you'll notice that the Truma has a different faceplate than that touch control. That one is gonna be underneath this panel here that is right here. This is also your generator and your solar main disconnects and also your awning lockout relay as well. Now there is, you do have some fuses under here. You have a fuse here. These are resettable breakers with little tabs. So you just push these up. Um, there is gonna be some breakers down there as well and a main ground pole. So you have your DC load center uh, layout here. Underneath there, we have this is where all of our 120 breakers are for our AC, our fridge, our inverter, our microwave, our receptacles, and our induction cooktop. We also have two GFIs here. We have one here and one here. And this here is our CO2 and propane. So you want to test this once the trip. Push that little button. And then I believe the bed stays are on this side here. Fancy cabinet. This cabinet. So we have this cabinet here. Inside this cabinet, we have our locked bed stays. Uh, could you hand me that table then? Mm -hmm. So we have our table. Our table actually stays in here as well when we're not using it. It goes on this side here. So this little latch is over top. This latch is over top. This kind of stays right there, so it's at its perfect distance. You can bring these out. This also is an awesome closet. And actually, you can't have that on there. So, misinformed you a little bit. So, let's try that. Yeah. So, the trick for that is you just take this and bring this out slightly to where it's just touching the back side of the table. It stays a little out. And this is bowed, so you don't have to worry about it touching the door. Now these here are gonna go right down here. One. We got two. Now these here strap to it. So that they stay up in transit. And then you just take these two, put them down like such. And then I'll have my camera lady flip flop and then uh, we'll be right back. Go ahead. All right, now that that is that way, I had the gears to get to the super screen. Now you can do this at the other one as well. I'm gonna hit extend. Now that's down. Now you have a full size bed back there, which is nice and comfy. And then when you're done, you can retract that. You can put those two panels back in the closet and then re-Velcro those backers back up and on. Uh, and then, go that way. We're gonna, you have your bathroom, which is at your main entry door here. You told me about the panels for the bed. All right, now we have our shower door. We have our bathroom mode here. So me, I'm a, I'm a wide-shouldered man. So we have our uh, bathroom sink here. It's nice and deep, so you don't have to worry about anything falling out. You have your sink here. And then you have your shower. To use your shower, all you have to do is have the water on and pull up on this here. Can you turn on the water pump? Mm -hmm. Home? Yep. Put the keys on my desk. 
So we turn on the water. And then we have our shower. And then it stays on after you have enough water pressure. But once you turn it off, it's gonna go halfway, so make sure you flush that down. So you don't get a nice surprise when you try to wash your hands. Hmm. Now me, I tend to try to leave this down a little bit for it to drain. And there is a drain plug in it. So make sure you take that out. Now the whole bathroom isn't really made 100% all to get wet, but if it does, don't worry too much. It's caulked and siliconed everywhere. Uh, do you have a little space here for your toilet paper and your comedities? And you also do have your uh, medicine cabinet as well, which is pretty nice. And it does have a safety chain, so the mirror doesn't come out and smash the wall and break. Uh, you also do have a sh sh uh, towel rack as well and 120 outlets. Now these all the 120 outlets aren't all GFIs, but they are all GFI protected. So when you're ready to use your shower here, on the left hand side you do have a little tab that comes out. These do have buttons on them and little Velcros. These little Velcros have little Velcro spots. And then you can bring this all the way around. Now this comes all the way around the front of the cabinet. So it's not hitting the cabinet and it has its same little tabs go all the way around. And I'm 5'11 and this still does feel comfortable. Now me, I could probably personally take the shower with the door closed. So it wouldn't bother me at all. And once you're done, put that all the way back. I tend to try to put that a little bit behind the toilet seat so it doesn't loft out. And then you have a little tab to hold that in place. Now, everything does drain at the bottom of the shower there. We have our toilet here. So if you really need to go while you're taking a shower, it's already there. You don't have to worry about nothing. And then you flush. You can fill up the bowl if you need to go number two. So I'm bringing it down slightly to fill up the bowl. And this does fill a little bit faster when you're hooked up to city water versus using the water tank. And then the flusher, all I'm gonna do, all the way down and that flushes. And it does leave a little water in there so that it does keep all the fumes from coming back into the camper. Now, you wanna make sure when you're using the bathroom to use, if you're gonna wipe a lot, make sure you use a lot of water when you're flushing it. Now you wanna bring this black tank all the way, never leave that black tank open onto the septic system because it's not like a house. So you have a tank in there and then you gotta fill it up and then let it drain, gravity drain everything back out. If you don't, you're gonna have clogs and leaks from your termination valve due to toilet paper sticking at the valve and once you close it, it's gonna reset into that. So to fix that is when you flush, count to 10 1,000, meaning 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, and so on till 10, and then let off the valve. Now there is a chemical additive to use in this, which you can get at our store here. Um, you want to use it per the instructions on the packet. Uh, they do have packet ones that you can throw in there. I do recommend to try to pre put water, put maybe about four, four bowls of water into your black tank there before even using it per camping trip. And then redo the process after you've uh, dumped it. So after you dump it, you want to kind of fill it up a little bit uh, and it helps it take keep everything from sticking to the bottom, saving you money, saving me aggravation of dealing with some stuff I wouldn't want to deal with, but I'm paid decently to do so. And yeah, money and aggravation at the end of the day, saves you a lot of that. And also the chemicals, you can buy different smelling ones per your preference, so that it can smell nice and lovely and not smell like a backwoods bathroom. Um, I did just notice that it does have a nice towel rack back here so you can hang your towel up when you're done. Now the bathroom itself doesn't have its own 
uh, light switches. The light switches for the bathroom are the lights themselves, so you just push them up and in, and that turns off those lights there. Uh, this does have a lock. The lock is on the back side, so you push that in, and then to unlock, you just push it out. So if you push this in, and I push it from this side, it doesn't work. So don't close it. If you do, it does have a little center punch button that you can push to unlock it, but it's not super, super easy. And then we have our chassis side, which the video that we're gonna attach will go over the dash and everything as well. A little bit more intuitive and also probably re over the, the motor possible. All right, this is the 2021 Pleasure Way um, TS. Plateau TS. Yeah, TS, it is the TS. I believe that co covers everything except for I missed the AC unit. Here, let's. Breath. All right, so this is our ceiling AC. This part here is the dump valve. So if you're trying to cool off the unit real quick, open this up for a maximum of 30 minutes. You do, you can uh, change the angle of the vents and close them off. So you can have them open or close them off. Uh, these are the only vents that it's going to push air out of. This front, back, and this dump valve one. So if you leave these open at night, it's going to hit here and come directly on you at the bed. So my mom always told me, don't have a fan on you while you're sleeping. So you can close this here so you don't have airflow going over top. Now you have two vents. These are your intakes. These are your intake filters. So keep these clean so that you don't have a bunch of dirt and everything in your system. Now these here just to remember which side goes up, you have this little pocket that's going to be facing down so you can get your finger in it to bring it out. There we are. And then um, all your windows on your door and in, in the back here, these ones they don't want you to open because of the generator, but you can open up this one. Now I don't recommend opening up this side when you're running the generator. I don't recommend leaving that one open if you're running the coach. So this one here, you can open up pretty large to allow a lot of airflow through. And then you turn it all the way to the right to close it. Now, once it's down, it's not all the way closed. Give it a little extra turn that sucks it in, allowing it to close securely. Now in the back here, just like a regular blind, now you can see that's kind of in the way. Just go ahead and push it and it has magnets on the side, the same with the opposite side. And there you are. Uh, you have the seating for two in the back here, and then you have your driver and passenger up front. And then you have just like a regular van. There we go. And you can bring that, clip it. Same with this side. Of course, you gotta adjust the little seat piece here. So it's just sorry about that long right now. Like so. Yeah, go slow because I keep on trying to go too fast. There we are. One fastener, two fastener. There we are. Um, and just like I said, you have this panel back here. So you have everything and everything that you had up front. Playing pages and everything. Power consumptions, fan, your time. And then if you see this and you're not plugged in, I'd recommend if you're not trying to use 120 to turn off your inverter, which is again in this compartment here. With that off, the next thing to save power is to turn off all the lights. Uh, you can close all your compartments and everything. So turn it all off, turn off the awning light, come back here, I'm gonna close the, the lid vent here. Uh, I did miss the smoke alarm, which is above our Kmart lady's head. 
which is just a regular standard smoke alarm. So I call it my cooking alarm because I'm not that great at it. And now that we have that unplugged, everything's off. I would be lying to you. Uh, this here, you can turn to the soft so you can have that on during the day. And turn off the water pump. And then turn that off. And then unplug that panel controller there. And then we're set. Um, seat controls are all located on the door, which you can set to a user settings. You have your heated seats, your door locks, unlocks and locks. And then we have our mirrors adjustments, which you pick your left mirror and your right mirror, and then the direction which you would like to push it. Now on these mirrors here, the only one that is electronically uh, moved is this mirror here. This one on the bottom, you have to physically move in place which direction you'd like it to go to get a better view. Also on these, you have the side uh, markers and then on your seat, underneath here, this here controls the leg amount of how much you'd like it outward. This here adjusts the, the backrest and the rear of the seat itself. So if you want the seat, rear of the seat to go upward and your lumbar support is all adjusted from here. Now, the seat does rotate to rotate the seat, you must make sure that the seat, you have the door open for one, um, that the seat is in the forward position. So there is a, a little holder here, right here, that you give a pull on to pull the seat forward, which I'll show you in a minute. So you pull the seat forward. Oh, wait, that's the unlock, my bad. Uh, it has a collapsing emergency brake, so you gotta make sure that's all the way down. Pull on this here, and that will rotate around so you can have com more company. Passenger seat does the same exact thing. Uh, just gotta make sure that your seat's all the way forward. On the door here, you push the seat forward to make the seat go forward. You push your seat back to make the seat go back, and then you have your uh, seat to bring it forward and back, your backrest. Uh, the seats are equipped with airbags as well. Uh, these units are all keyless entry and remote uh, keyless start. So there is a position from the factory to put your keys, which is located almost to the floor here. So you wanna take the key fob itself, little hole here, put in place. I want to ask for you to do it on the dash, or you can just take these keys and leave it in your pocket, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave these here in my pocket. And then come up. You want to put your foot on the brake. Once you do that, push and hold the engine start button, and it'll start right up. Uh, the beeping you were hearing while I had the motor running is the jacks. Right now I have the jacks down. Uh, here is your headlight control. You have auto, you have headlights on, and then you have your markers on. Uh, this here is your fog lights, and this is the dimmer for your dash. So you can bring your dash up and down. That also controls the large center uh, screen as well, which is here. So here's all the way down, here's all the way up. So it's kind of hard to see on the TV, but on the TV, on the camera. And then we have some spaceship controls on the steering wheel. Here we have our uh, cruise control, our lane departure and warning, our home button, uh, Blackberry button, which controls the center dash here. So we have our miles, our MPGs, our uh, acceleration and miles on here. We have our miles from start for planning, from reset, and our miles per hour. 
Then we have, of course, our horn. Our home button is here. This one here controls our center dash here. So we don't have to take our hands off the steering wheel. So you have on home. Uh, also, you have the BlackBerry control right here as well. So you can navigate from the steering wheel. So you have your navigation, your phone, the radio, your media, meaning like Bluetooth devices and such. Info is like your dash info. Uh, Mercedes apps, which you can download onto your phone. If you say Mercedes, it works with like a Siri. So like if you say, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? It will take care of, you can just voice command it and it will go through, search the internet after hooking up everything. You have your vehicle settings, so you can set all of your lights and such. So your electronic speed control, your lane departure, uh, you have your assistance, which is your traffic sign assist, your lane departures, your braking assists, your attention assist, so beep and stuff on you. So like, uh, gotta make sure the ignition is on. So we have like standard. Uh, this whole screen also, it's just touch screen. So you can be like, change your settings on here as well. Uh, also on the steering wheel, we have our voice command, our favorites, our volume up and down for the radio, our phone call and hang up. These here aren't buttons, but there is a little black piece here, which you can pull down and push up. Same, so like voice commands, favorites, and that's the same for the reset. Cancel, set is pushing up, set is pulling down, uh, lane departure is up, uh, distance departure is pulling down, uh, on and off for the cruise control. And then we also have our info for our vehicles. So we have our engine. Let me just turn this to on without starting it. We have our battery voltage we can read here, which is awesome. Our horsepower and engine torque, our fuel consumption. You can set that to 30 minutes, 90 minutes to figure out where your most fuel consumption is. Uh, we have our parking camera here, which has three settings. So you can have like a wide angle, which splits these two uh backing up and then our towing so it brings it more of a downward look uh, this one does not on this one i guess no it does not so it's the same pictures on that uh, we have our telephone so we can quick go to it our navi map so if you don't feel like scrolling through stuff you can just quick push it you got your radio back to home, our vehicle controls, our power button for mute. So if you long hold this, we'll turn the system off. To turn the system back on, that also includes your backup camera won't function unless you have the system on. Just press it here. We have our, this one here is so you can change your channel. And then you have, I think it's, yeah, 10 presets. So if we go back to radio, you can also scroll left and right from the uh, steering wheel, or you can just take a hold, scroll through it, kind of like a iTunes system. You have Sirius, you have FM, Sirius radio, AM radio. Uh, these little buttons here are like your, you can do it like messages and lists from your notifications. After you sync up your phone, you can check them here, delete, and then settings. I'll mute this again, press that once. Uh, to set up your profiles, what you'd want to do is hit create profile. Uh, you can pick your character, whichever you'd like. There's a couple here that you can choose from. Uh, put in the name. After doing so, you can choose factory settings or current settings. Then click continue. Kind of make a profile. 
Now keep in mind when you make a profile, this does all of the preset controls, your air conditioning controls, your seat controls. Uh, this here you can use from just making behaviors, meaning stuff you normally do, it will make suggestions. Uh, you can, it uses data and stuff. Uh, you can choose to use it or not. Hit continue, you can put in your home address so you can just say, hey Mercedes, I wanna go home and it'll start navigation to it. Uh, you can uh, set up an address for that. And then you can connect to your iPhone or Android by connecting, hitting that, uh, connect new device. And then you just search for this label here, which will give you a password per thing that you do. And you just gotta make sure that you have it properly set up on your phone through your Bluetooth stuff and click finish. After doing so, uh, you can uh, go through and everything. And then you can set up your radio channels, your navigation. This will have presets on your navigation. So if you're setting up between two users, you want to, we'll have the searches from whichever user you have used last. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your uh, profiles. Now, if you need to, you can delete the profile by clicking the three little dots over here on the name. So let's say you're on guest, you'll go to that profile uh, and active, have it active so you see which one you're using. Push it here, scroll down, press delete, and then press yes to delete. It will revert back to the previous unit that was on last, which is guest. There's your notification, we can delete that. Uh, also, this whole system kind of works like a phone. Uh, sometimes, I want to. So you have your notifications, and if you want to get rid of that, sometimes. Uh, this one's not doing it today. But sometimes you can scroll up and down. You have your favorites. Uh, scrolling down with the little down arrow. Sounds, displays, familiar music, create a favorite. Um, you can set your orders of how you'd want to set everything up. Uh, then we have our temperature controls, which are down here. Try to get a better camera angle for you. There we go. We have our temperature set. So if we want it colder versus warmer, hold this down. We'll have our temperature here. Uh, this one here is doing the frost with the front and rear. So you have your front, front and floor, the froster in front, the froster front and floor and so on. You have your four ways, which will turn on your four ways. This here gives you your max air to all of your windows, meaning your front window and your side windows. There is little vents on the sides that will do your side windows. And also you have your vents here. Uh, to close these vents, you wanna rotate these to the right. When they're up and down like such, it's closed. That is open. Also, this unit here has this compartment, which houses your 12 volt outlet, which is right here. You have your tablet outlet, which uses this uh, S uh, cable system, kind of like the new Android phones use, except that to use like an iPhone, you'd need a S cable to a USB, and then you can plug in your USB to lightning cable for a iPhone or you need a S cable to S cable to use your Android, uh, which is kind of like the same ends that are on the Androids anymore. Not the mini USBs, but it's called an S cable. Uh, you have your regular fresh air, which you can open up, which will blow fresh outside air to the interior here. Uh, to have these to the left to close, have it all the way to the right to open. Halfway in the center gives you like half air. Doesn't really work that well. Uh, we have our cup holders, a little rubber mat on both sides, and then the same controls as driver's side here for your chair, lock and heated seats. And then to the left here, this little latch here, which is kind of black and in the way here, this one does the hood release for your hood. Oops, just knocked the camera.
And then we have our manuals and everything for the Mercedes chassis. How may I help you? And don't say Mercedes too much, it'll go crazy. Also on this unit, you have your paddle shifters for your gear selection while driving. Uh, on the left hand side here, you have your indicators for left and right turn. Also have your window wiper motors. You can also push in to have the water come out. To take this unit out of park, I'm gonna turn this off of operation, push it in. To take it out of park, you gotta make sure you release the emergency brake, and then you can put it in drive. After you put it in drive, if you do so, the jacks will automatically re retract on this unit. To put it back in park, I'm gonna push this button. Uh, on the bottom here, we have our uh, fuel levels, our temperature level, and this here is our DEF level. You'll see these start to go gray or black, which will allow it not to really run that much. Uh, on this system, you have the hydraulic jack system on it. Also, you have up top here, which is your lights, which are two uh, book map lights and then a full light with this here depressed or undepressed will allow this to stay on until you close the door, press it in, it will turn off uh, and stay off. You have an SOS button for uh, kind of like OnStar back in the day. This here we'll call Mercedes maintenance. And then you have your old school glasses holder. And this is the speaker where it would come out and go to for all calls and everything. So when you're making a call, you kind of want to try to talk to the center of the vehicle when talking, even though when you talk forward, it's still going to be legible. You'll just get better auto audio reception 